Good morning everybody and welcome to morning prayer from St John's this morning. I'm dressed in a cassock this morning as uh, I will be shortly taking a funeral. I don't normally wear or dress up for morning prayer, perhaps in Lent I do. Uh, and speaking of Lent, uh, I don't know if you can see behind me just on the pulpit and the lectern, um, but it is still dressed in purple here. Uh, a reminder of when we left it, we were still in the midst of Lent. Isn't that amazing, all that time ago, uh, when we left our churches. It's a good sign to see it still in purple, it means no one's been in here, which is good, because that's currently against the law. Um, so, today actually we, um, from last Sunday being Pentecost, this week we now enter into ordinary time, and in ordinary times, our church would be dressed in green and I would be wearing green if I were um, at a communion service. So today, in ordinary time, we have morning prayer on a Thursday. If you would like to add in the readings set for today, uh, they will be, we will be looking at, would be looking at Psalm 143, 143, um, and our Old Testament reading would be from the book of Joshua, uh, a difficult book, Joshua, and we would be reading almost all of chapter, well, all of chapter 4. The set reading is chapter 4, verse 1, to chapter 5, verse 1. So all of chapter 4. So if you would like to read those at home, before or after you listen to morning prayer, those would be the readings for today. I will just read the Gospel reading today, um, otherwise we might be here for rather too long. So morning prayer on a Thursday. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so our first reading, or our reading today, is from Luke's Gospel. And it's Luke chapter 9, verses 51 to the end of the chapter. When the days drew near for him, Jesus, to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive them, because his face was set to Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To, to another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This reading is a, it's a bit of a tricky one, really. And Jesus <coughs> is on his way to Jerusalem. He knows what's about to happen to him. He knows he's going to his death. And although he knows what's beyond, it's still uh, something that he must accomplish, something that he has to go through. Um, something that can, he can easily say no to, wouldn't you or I? Yes. 
we would want to save our lives, um, and yet he knows he's going to his death. So I think he's getting a little bit short-tempered at this time, um, and in this reading, let the dead bury their dead. Um, no one who puts their hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom. Um, you know, he, he's just getting a bit to the end of his tether, I think. We don't often see a cross, Jesus, do we? A little bit grumpy, maybe, not so much cross. But what he's saying is, is quite true, and um, I think it is for all of us. And maybe this is something we've learned in these past strange weeks, since May, uh, March 20, whatever it was, whenever we went into lockdown, I can't even remember now. It was definitely something I've learned after those first few weeks, uh, the flurry of organising everything and, and trying to work out how we were going to do everything from different places and different homes and, and all of that rush. I think there has been a much quieter pace of life for many of us, of course, some of having to be continuing to work, especially our friends in the NHS. But for a lot of us, it's been a little bit more peaceful. I, I definitely have found in the past that I'm, I'm running around trying to think, well, where am I going to do morning prayer? Um, I could listen to it in the car on my way to this next meeting. Or if I do it this place, that means that I won't have to rush to the next meeting because I can do it there. Or maybe I'll just do it quickly while I eat my cornflakes. And I've not made room for God. I've tried to cram him in. This is what Jesus is saying here in this reading. You know, don't get waylaid by everything in, in the world. Just try and put God first. And I, I think that's something I've learned. It's something I'm going to take on when, if, if and when, <laughs> when we eventually get back to some kind of normality that we're used to in our church life. There's not so much rushing, not so much trying to cram it all in, but more concentrated prayer time, scripture reading, prayer time, sitting and being quiet and listening to God, something I had got badly wrong, I admit. In the busyness of life, it's, it's so easy. And then what example are we setting for others? How can we tell other people about God, about the love of God, about what he does in, his, in our lives, if we don't allow him into our lives, and we don't allow him to work in our lives, and we don't give the time for him to speak to us? How can we be letting him in and telling others about how to let him in? Definitely a lesson I've learned. And maybe, I hope you have too, that you've been able to spend more time with your Bible, more time uh, listening perhaps to prayers online or um, podcasts or sermons, um, and just spending a little bit more quiet, meditative time with Christ, and not rushing around. So let's pray, shall we? A responsory in morning prayer for after the scripture reading. A very fitting one for today. It's from Isaiah 43. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burnt. I have called you by name. You are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. So let us pray. So Lord, we pray for ourselves this day, for the tasks that we have in it. We pray that we would find the time today 
to sit, to listen to you, to read your scriptures, your words, to take them in and have time to sit and listen with you. We pray for all of those things that we have to do today for those who we will talk to, whether it be here on Zoom or any other social media, or whether we will meet today face to face. We pray for all of those who are working today, those who are back to work, those who are fearful in their workplaces, those who continue to work on our front lines to keep us fed, to keep us safe, to keep us well. We pray for all our emergency services. And Lord, we pray for our schools now open to a number of students. We pray for our infant school and our junior school here in North Baddersley. And for the Federation of Schools in Anfield and Pursley. Praying for those staff, for the head teachers, and especially for the families and children. And Lord, as we look around our world and hear our news, we pray for the US, for the family of George Floyd. We pray that all those who profess themselves to be Christian would live out their Christian life, knowing that you made every person in your image. Every being is precious to you and therefore precious to us. We pray for all who suffer from oppression, from injustice around the world. We pray for those places where it happens also in our country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we think, Lord, of all of those whom we know and love, who we worry about, those we have not seen for a long time, for friends and neighbours. We pray that those who are unwell would know your grace and your healing. We pray for all of those who are on our prayer lists, for those you speak about, for those who you hold dear. And we pray for all of those who are mourning loved ones, those whose anniversaries are around this time of year. And we pray particularly for the soul of Betty Ings, whose funeral takes place this morning, for all those who knew and loved her. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, Surely, trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.